April is Rosacea Awareness Month and for those of you who know me in the channel, you know that I've posted a lot about my struggles with rosacea, some of the products that I've used to help overcome it, and I say overcome it kind of loosely. Um, I've come to terms with it, I recognize what my triggers are, I understand better how to maintain my skin barrier, and most importantly focus on the treatments and medications that give me the best outcome for my skin. I will say rosacea is definitely a marathon and not a sprint. As is most things with skincare, there's rarely an overnight success or magic treatment that's going to solve all your skin issues no matter what they are, but certainly that's the case with rosacea, at least that's been my experience. While I have my rosacea pretty much under control, I still have flare-ups, I still have irritation, I still kind of regress backwards, so I just wanted to kind of sit back, relax, and do a little bit of an update video for you on how my rosacea and my skin is doing now and what I attribute my success to. My skin at its lowest point look like this but you can see now I specifically for today's video I'm not wearing any foundation BB cream CC cream I chose a tinted mineral sunscreen it's really new to me it was sent to me in PR it's naked Sunday's tinted mineral sunscreen I like the tinted mineral sunscreens of course because they offset the white cast overall my skin is just so much better than it was not to say that I don't still have flare-ups I do especially when I ignore my triggers which I know full well what they are red wine which sucks because I love red wine spicy foods also sucks I love spicy foods and my husband likes to cook spicy foods so yeah sometimes I have to suffer through the aftermath with my skin and the Sun it's very hard to avoid the Sun but I do my best to mitigate that so I will wear a hat when I'm out in the Sun for prolonged periods of time and I always 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 wear a daily sunscreen my view on sunscreen is honestly just find one you love and use that speaking of setbacks recently I was traveling staying in a hotel room you know the air is different in the hotel room I was drinking red wine with dinner the climate was slightly different you can see on my face here how my rosacea flares and it's almost immediately so as much as I try to control my triggers and set the situation to be optimal for success it still happens I'll tell you what I did in my story and hopefully you can just extrapolate from that something that may be useful for you of course you should be in consultation with a medical professional I'm not that I'm simply here to share with you my story and my experience so that hopefully it can arm you with some more information and help you along the way. If nothing else, to know you're not alone. The hallmarks of my rosacea is an impaired barrier, associated redness and flushing, irritation, inflammation, and pimples. Back when it was at its worst, this is what I did. I stopped everything in my skincare routine, basically put myself on a skincare diet. I went back to the very basics of cleansing and moisturizing my skin. And when it comes to cleansing, just choose a cleanser that's very gentle and hydrating. That's what worked for me. Um, I've used this, Cetaphil, Vanna cream was one of my favorites uh, this one by Avino continues to be one of my favorites It's their common restore line and I wanted to call out this one this is the glucoside foaming cleanser and while this is a new launch from the ordinary I've been really enjoying this product for my skin my children have been using it too and they also have very sensitive skin it was tested on babies originally and it's just been a really lovely cleanser so back then when I was at my worst I wish I would have had something like this too I've also used CeraVe's hydrating cleanser it's really just about finding the one that works best for you within your price point I only cleanse my skin at night with a cleanser in the morning I use water only this is one of the ways I was able to keep my barrier intact the cleansing process just seemed to be too much for my skin if I was doing it morning and night so that was really a game changer for me and for moisturizers I like to offer something that's rich in ceramides and that is a little bit occlusive to lock that moisture into the skin because one of the hallmarks of rosacea is a damaged skin barrier it has trouble holding and retaining that moisture into the skin so if you can do that with your moisturizer you're ahead of the game so CeraVe's moisturizing lotion is a great one I love regimen labs cream this is their second iteration of this particular product they've actually improved the consistency and the applicability of this on the skin it's far less thick and more spreadable I'd say on the skin 
And this one's fabulous because it has ceramides, as does the CeraVe one. It's a higher price point for this, but I just really love this brand. For a gel type moisturizer, going back to Aveeno, this Common Restore line has just been really good for my skin. I love this. It's drugstore, so it's readily accessible and great for my combination skin. Sometimes I don't want a thick, rich moisturizer. This can be great in the morning and a thicker, richer cream in the evening is sometimes what I opt for. But another new launch from The Ordinary, they've improved or added added to their natural moisturizing factors line and this one is their natural moisturizing factors plus phytoceramides so again just adding more ceramides into the formulation making this a really good moisturizer for rosacea in my opinion and also for those of you with dry skin when it comes to daily sunscreen my opinion just find one that works for you whether it's chemical mineral hybrid whatever it is tinted non-tinted cheap, expensive. If you're going to put it on your face every day, go with that one. I'm being facetious because sometimes sunscreen can be irritating to some and you want to find the one that best suits your skin. I've actually created a Shop My which really lists the products that are my favorites by category. Those are affiliate links, so you don't have to purchase through those. Just look at what the products are, and then you can Google and purchase on your own, because otherwise I make a very small commission if you purchase from those links. So if you want to, great, and thank you. If you don't, totally fine as well. But the point is to be able to share with you what my favorites are by genre. So I'll link my favorites below for my sunscreen category so you can take a look through there. Ask me specific questions in the comments if you have about any particular product. All of the ones that are listed there are ones that have worked for my skin. So I hope you find that helpful. But I did want to call out this product that came to me in PR. This is by Dr. Jard. It's their Sika Pear Tiger Grass Camp Drops. They're really neat and and it's green looks kind of gross but if you know the color wheel green offsets or neutralizes red now this is an SPF 35 but I actually use this kind of more like makeup and then it's just giving me that additional Sun protection so I apply whatever sunscreen I'm wearing for the day and then I put a few drops of this over top and it really neutralizes the red. So I'm kind of almost using it like makeup as opposed to sunscreen, but definitely impressed with this product. For me, beyond getting a basic skincare routine in place and focusing on restoring and repairing my skin barrier without adding in any active ingredients like retinoids and vitamin C's and acids and all that stuff, just keeping it to the basics, I also needed medical intervention. So at the time, I was prescribed this, which is Metro Gel. This is an antibiotic gel, often used for people who struggle with rosacea. I can say that this was definitely responsible for getting my rosacea under under control in that kind of acute flare-up phase that I was in. Once my skin barrier was intact and things were calmed down, settled down, that's when I could reintroduce the active ingredients into my skincare routine, such as my vitamin C, retinoids, etc. So just because I have rosacea doesn't mean that I can't capitalize on those things. It's just sometimes I have to opt for versions that are more sensitive skin friendly. And when I have a flare-up, I kind of revert back to the basics again, just to be sure my skin's under control before I reintroduce those active ingredients in my skincare routines. The next thing, and it's no surprise for those of you who have watched my channel for a while, it's the thing that I actually attribute my kind of ongoing success with my rosacea is azelaic acid. I feel like it is really responsible for keeping my rosacea at bay and maintaining my skin barrier overall. I have used over-the-counter azelaic acid serums for years and I can say some of my favorites are Paula's Choice 10% Azelaic Acid Booster and this one by Theramid, it's their Azid or Azid, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but this one's a 15% Azelaic Acid. I was impressed with this one because it's actually the same percentage of Azelaic Acid as my prescription strength Azelaic Acid. And I fairly recently started this prescription. Venacea? Venacea? Tomato, tomato? I'm not sure. But it's a 15% prescription only here in Canada, azelaic acid. Now, the different approach I've had with this one versus the other ones is that I was normally using those once a day, generally in my morning skincare routine paired with my vitamin C. But I've been using this one now for about six weeks, twice a day, morning and evening skincare routine. It's another reason I love this as a product, azelaic acid. It pairs well with so many other things. It really doesn't have conflicts. You don't have to worry about it. I use it 
it in my evening skincare routine paired with my retinoid, in my morning skincare routine paired with my vitamin C. The only thing I don't do is I don't put it in the same routine as my acid day. When I use my AHA or alpha hydroxy acid, it's once a week and I just focus on the acid and hydrating skincare products to surround that routine. I'm only six weeks into this sort of regime, so I will definitely do an update for you later on, but already I am reaping the benefits of this Overall, I can feel that my skin is just more calm and healthy. Azelaic acid has so many health benefits for the skin, especially for rosacea. It works to decrease the swelling, the associated redness, but is really effective at targeting the bacteria that's in the pores that can also contribute to the pimples associated with rosacea. Making this also a great product or great ingredient for those of you with acne prone skin. Of course, there can be associated side effects. I think primarily those are tingling, stinging, and even drying of the skin. I personally haven't had that experience, so I'd love to hear from those of you who perhaps have had that experience. You can share that in the comment section below. But certainly if you're using a prescription azelaic acid, you'd be in consultation with a medical professional, and of course they'd be able to talk to you more about that. But if you're using OTC or over-the-counter azelaic acids, just be aware if you're experiencing that as well. I will continue to monitor my rosacea with you, and I'll do more updates as we go along and just see how my journey goes, because I'm hoping it's helping you to understand more about the disease and spreading awareness which is what the April Rosacea Awareness Month is all about. I'll drop some information on that in particular below. I would really really love it if you would share your thoughts, experiences, comments in the comments section below. If you haven't watched them already be sure to watch these videos up on screen and I hope you have a fabulous day.